Okay, so hello everyone. Exciting, exciting. <laughs> um, today to a very special introduction to the neurographic line. Um, I decided to do basically an own its own process that is going to be dedicated just to the line because the line is such a crucial fundamental, super, super important element of the Neurographica method. And for everyone who has never heard of Neurographica before, I'm just gonna mention a few words. Neurographica is a drawing method, but it's also more. <laughs> um, Pavel Piskarev, the founder of Neurographica, the creator, he initially created it as a self-coaching tool. So Neurographica, can help us um, solve our own life challenges, um, see ourselves deeper, I'm gonna say, um, and it can help us understand ourselves. So to me, I really like to describe it as a self-reflection tool, um, as a self-exploration tool, um, and I am also using it in one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions and I'm using it in um, sessions with many people, like in group sessions, I'm using it in my teaching, I'm using it in many, many different ways. And that's one of the things that I really love about Neurographica. It is very versatile. It doesn't just fit in one box. It like you have to open a lot of boxes to fit it in basically. Um, so it's a drawing method, um, but before we draw, um, I always like to remind myself and everyone else that it's not just a drawing method and it doesn't just inform or concern our mind, our eyes and our hands. No, it concerns our entire body, our emotions, our mind and more. No, it's like a holistic method, I would call it. So I would like to invite you to um, spend a moment and tune in with me and just feel into where you are right now. Uh, you can sit comfortably. It's good if your spine is relatively straight, if you feel like no, not a lot of strains in your body. Um, you can close your eyes for a moment if you wish to. And then just tune into your body. Maybe you feel your feet on the ground. Maybe you feel the places where your body meets the chair. Maybe you feel any other part of your body. Maybe there is a tingling somewhere. Maybe it's a itching somewhere. Maybe there's a little pain somewhere. Whatever it is, I like to invite you to become the observer. Train yourself in observation. And just welcome whatever wants to be seen right now. You can take a few deep breaths. Let's see how the breath alone may influence your body. Maybe you feel it becoming calmer. And then I would like to ask you to check in with your emotions. Where are you emotionally? What? comes up in your heart space. And without judging it, maybe there isn't even names for it, but if there are, you can try and name it. Maybe I'm a little bit anxious. I'm also excited. And I feel happy. Ask yourself, how do you feel? Really give yourself this attention and this moment. And breathe again. If there's anything that needs to be let go, you can let it go with the breath. And then we also wanna check in with our minds with the thoughts. Maybe your thoughts already started running. Maybe you're wondering what all of this is about, what this has to do with drawing. 
and you will find out soon. Maybe you're at your grocery list or with another problem in your life that your mind constantly starts to solve. Whatever it is, just allowing it to be there without judgment, without wanting to change it. And again, let's take a few deep breaths. Oh. And then whenever you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes. You can maybe also move your body a little bit if that feels comfortable. And I'm going to explain to you the reason why we just did that. It's because in Neurographica, we constantly self-observe. This is why I like to introduce this threefold kind of observation of the body, the emotions, and the mind before I started drawing. And I constantly remind my participants, my clients to go back to that. Um, so whenever we start drawing a theme, which we usually do in Neurographica, um, we will see how our body, our emotions, our mind react to it and how it reacts to whatever we put on the paper. So it's a very interwoven process of self-observation, mindfulness, and art. Now, let's get to the lines. I'm actually going to start um, switching my camera so you can see what I do. And I would like to invite you to a few experiments. Now that we observed ourselves, we can observe what each line, what kind of effect each line has for us. Um, as I mentioned before I was on the video, I use Sharpies normally when I demonstrate something. Um, I also have thinner Sharpies. I have all kinds of drawing pens, I admit. Um, I have these brush pens that I really love. But for today, for the exercises, I'm going to use Sharpies. You can use literally whatever pen you have, even if you have a pencil. That is totally fine. A pencil, any type of drawing, writing pen, um, even a colored pencil, whatever you got at hand, or a marker, you know, or like a kindergarten kind of marker also works. So the first line that I want to start with is... Um, the straightest line, and um, it's the line that, in a way, we created in society a lot. So if I imagine, okay, I want to get from point A to point B, what's my possibilities? I can make a straight line. So I would like to invite you to just draw one, two, three straight lines and feel into what does that do in your body, in your emotions, in your mind, and I did the first one very fast, but we can also go slower and see, okay, what it, does it feel like to try and do a very straight, slow line? And I already see, okay, this is almost like turning into a tiny little bit no graphic line because it's not going to be straight. Um, so a no graphic line, of course, is not straight. And it has a very different impact. So when you observe yourself. Maybe you even want to make a little note what that feels like so you can remember later. Just a straight line. It's very straightforward. It's very predictable. Here it begins, there it ends. All of the lines look more or less the same. Because I'm a human, they don't look the same. If I was a computer, they would. <laughs> Um, and you see, I'm, I started on the top of my paper, but you can, of course, use your entire paper. But as I said, we're going to go through a few different lines. So I kind of made space for that. Now, the next one I would like to invite you to do is a kind of pattern where we go up and down and 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 kind of feel into that. What sensation, what emotion, what thought 
comes up when you just keep going in a pattern, keep repeating yourself like a record, playing it over and over again. To me, this has a little bit of different sensation than that. I am a person that doesn't really like repetition, but I know that repetition is something that is in general very soothing in a way. No, it's also predictable. We know every time we're up, it's gonna go down again, and it's gonna go up again, and it's gonna go down again. So this one also is predictable and it's kind of easy for the mind to understand. No, I start the line, this is the pattern, and I end the line. Um, now we can do another one that's also repetitive, but it may not be quite as um, a regular pattern, I'm going to say, and this is the circle line. You know, a lot of people like to do that. Just keep going in circles observing yourself while you do it. And it's good to kind of slow down every now and then to really feel it. So this line is a little bit more surprising maybe, but the movement that I do is very predictable. It's the same. Um, you know, I keep going and I, I also, I don't exactly know what it's gonna look like, but I know what I'm gonna do. So it's another line that is safe and predictable in a way. Um, Pavel, he has a, special relationship to loops. He says that when we draw loops, we also do loops in our mind. So uh, the more loops I draw, the more like themes, I just come back to it and I come back to it and I come back to it and I come back to it. And I don't actually create change. And no graphica is a method that is geared towards change. We want to create change. So the last line that I want to squeeze on my little paper here, is what I call an intuitive line. And this may include elements of others. Um, and I kind of could say, I just uh, follow my intuition. No, I just follow where my pen wants to go. So we can do that and see where that leads us. That may be... looks different and now it's already super overlapping with my other line. This I'm going to say is closer to a neurographic line, but it is not yet a neurographic line. So because I still kind of follow um, an inner feeling that tells me that the line should go there or like my aesthetic idea that tells me that I need to make another loop somewhere. I'm going to do one more on the other side just so that we can see. So if I follow my intuition, I still kind of... Mm, I'm going to say... I don't control it, but I understand where it goes. It feels comfortable. I think that might be it. An intuitive line basically follows where we want to go. Um, but that's also not really what we're doing in Neurographica. So I'm gonna summarize real quick. So we're not going straight, never. 
as one of the rules really in neurographic and it's never really straight. I mean, my straight lines are not really straight. So it's kind of hard to do straight lines as a human being anyways. We're not doing patterns, repetitive patterns where we always know what comes next. We're not doing um, repetition in terms of repeating the pathway. Um, no, we're, we're not doing repetitive movements, I'm going to say. There are no repetitive patterns that we see, but also the movement that I make with my hand is not supposed to be repetitive. And also, we don't really want to follow where it feels good, which that's a <laughs> point that's kind of interesting about Neografica. And at the same time, very paradox. So what is the neurographic line then? When we draw a line, first of all, it always ends and exits at the edge of the paper. When we just draw lines, when we have figures, we can also kind of just connect figures, but um, the line will always be connected to something. So it doesn't stand alone. So even if I just draw lines on my picture, uh, on my paint, uh, on my paper, um, it's always connected to something beyond the paper. You could say no. It could always keep on going this way or this way. The way I want to feel the line, and this is why I did all these exercises before, is that. Pavis says that the neurographic line can help us um, get closer to ourselves, basically. And we want to go towards inner blocks, inner, um, yeah, where we have like tension, no? where we feel tension. Um, these are the points that we want to solve. These are the parts that we may want to change. And in order to be able to even change them, we need to first go towards them. It's a little bit like the idea of in order for us to overcome our fears, we have to face them. So in order for us to overcome or solve inner limitations, inner problems, challenges in our lives, um, inner blocks or tension or anything like that, we need to move towards it. And this is what we do with the line. So when I very slowly start drawing a line, I observe what I feel. I observe, especially my body, but also of course my emotions and my thoughts. And I'm gonna go super slow right now, just because that makes it easier to feel. And then whenever I feel that I'm kind of controlling the line, you no, know, I was kind of going down there and I, kind of saw, okay, I'm, I'm moving this way, then I change. So I want to create a pattern that I cannot control, where I almost um, outsmart my head somehow, going in a way that is almost a little bit confusing for myself, where I look at the line and I wonder, wow, how did this happen? How did I go there now? So it's not as smooth and comfortable and maybe relaxing as an intuitive line, but it will be more effective because we're not just going where it feels good, but we're also allowing to go where we may feel challenged. And so this is, yeah, I feel like several different sensations in my body. I just felt like a weird feeling in my head. I feel almost sweaty a little bit. So this is a line that portrays something that's going on inside of me. So while I go, over this line, there's a lot of different, um, yeah, a lot of different sensations that I feel, a lot of different things that come up for me. And here I want to stop for a second and say, of course, this is always subject to how much you can take. So 
one thing that's incredibly important when working with Neurographica in that way that really goes towards our triggers is to always check in with yourself how much you can take. Now, as I said, I just started like feeling heat in my body. And of course I have to decide, okay, I'm, I'm not gonna push it too far. I'm not gonna push it to where I feel really, really uncomfortable and where I don't wanna do this anymore. But I wanna go to where I look at the line and I feel it's something new for me. I've never seen this line before. This is what we wanna do. And so we can just practice this for a little while now. One way to really experience this feeling of not being able to control it is drawing with your non-dominant hand. So I would like to invite you to do that for one second and also go very, very slow and observe what happens inside of you. So if I go with my non-dominant hand, no matter how much I try to control it, it's not gonna happen. And whenever I feel that I'm kind of moving in one direction and I'm confident, yeah, this is the direction I'm going in, I will make very slight changes. Ooh. And of course we want the line to be smooth. So usually we don't have a lot of corners as well. There are practices where we explicitly work with corners. I'm gonna talk about that more at the end. But yeah, they see this is the line that I could not have thought out before. So just working with that. It's really a good practice to go a little bit with a non-dominant hand. And where you wanna go is surprising yourself. Where you wanna go is to where you're like, wow, I did not see this coming. And of course we can still go in a certain direction. I've been just going from this way to this way, but I'm never exactly gonna know where it ends. Interestingly, of course, once there are more than one line, the sensation really changes. So I would like to all, um, also invite you to observe that. Um, it's a different feeling to draw a line on a blank piece of paper, the first line, and to draw a line on a piece of paper where there's already a line. So you automatically, that's just how our brains are wired reacting to what's already there. And this is one of the things that's really interesting in that, of course, we work with in Neurographica. We are reacting to our thoughts. Pavel Piskorev says that every line represents a thought, a, a line of thought in our minds. And when we work with a the theme, um, it of course we can say that it's a line of thought that's somehow connected to our theme. But if we just throw lines onto the paper, they, they can still represent something that's going on inside us. And then we have these overlappings. We have these areas where there's a lot of um, connections a lot of crossing of the lines. We're gonna to come to these sections in a, in a little while. Um, but yes, yeah, so the overall feeling of doing the line is to not control it, but to be completely aware and conscious of your own sensations, of your own body, of your emotions, of your mind. And of course, looking at what you're creating. And that is like something that has an, an impact again on your inner uh, feelings. So when I draw a line that I really like, I, it makes me happy. You know, when I create something that's beautiful, it's gonna make a positive impact inside me. So we wanna be aware 
but we also want to be completely open to whatever happens and we want it allow it to happen and so it's in a way really kind of going against our like usual everyday mind state now we like to be in control this is why lines that come in patterns are much easier to draw and much easier to digest and uh, much easier kind of to be with <laughs> than lines that maybe do something that I don't find very beautiful at that moment. But I'm still going to go with it because I want to go deeper than that. One way of really describing it nicely is to take the road less traveled by our minds. And that is one of the reasons why the neurographic line can really help us solve inner issues because our mind is used to going certain ways, is used to thinking certain thoughts and repeating them. Oh, we have repetitive patterns in our minds. And the neurographic line helps us to break out of those patterns in a way. And of course, as I said, we're gonna to have to go a little bit towards the tension. Um, it doesn't work if it's only comfortable, but of course we have to see how much we wanna take at one point. Now I'm gonna start one more paper. Um, and bring in a little bit something like a theme, I'm going to say, because that is a way, usually when we do drawings, we draw something. And I would like to invite you to think of the river of your life. Think of your life as a river. I have these, um, let me share that real quick, actually. Um, these images of rivers that I shared um, before this class, um, because they are so fascinating. You no know, rivers are so interesting, and it's so interesting how they influence and shape their surroundings. So we can think of our line as a river of our life, and we can think of it might go through different environments. You no, know, there's environments where the river has very easy way where it can soak easily into the surrounding, where it can sh really shape the surrounding. Then there might be rivers that change all the time. Like this one, I think this one's Amazon River, um, where when it rains more, it takes more space. It takes a different path. And so we can kind of think of our lives like that. You no, know? or this one, it has a really hard time actually, you know, it, um, went through all this rock, this river created this valley you know, in so much work. And there's places where it's thicker, places where it's thinner, places where it's more curvy, where it's less curvy. And it's completely unpredictable. You know? We can't look at the landscape and say, if there was a river, it would, would look like that. You no, know, the river is a living being. It's a living um yeah, it's, it's movement. So when we draw neurographic lines, we can also think of it as that, as our inner movement. So I would like to invite you to kind of imagine that for yourself. Your river, your life, how does it move? What does it move like? Um, does it have a certain frequency? Are there things that you keep coming back to, for example? Um, and yeah, we can bring that on the paper. So um, again, I would like you to be open and experimental about it. Oh, I have it on my paper. I want a super clean paper. Um, so that the first line is going to be literally on this blank canvas and I can just feel into where does it go. And of course, I'm going to allow it to have this little um, tension there. Now this energy, I want to feel the energy. I want to feel 
um, not just an easy flow, but I mean, my life, for example, personally is not very easy um, lately. So it makes sense for me to feel tension there. So feeling into the aliveness and the dynamic of the line. Um, we can go slow or fast. I'm gonna go slow in these. So I just start one line. And I try to not control, but be very aware. And whenever I have the feeling my mind starts controlling, I just make slight changes. I want to surprise myself with this. I want to see a line that I did not imagine. I want to go the path that I didn't go before. And now we can really feel into the second line is going to be meeting this line. So it's going to be a very interesting dynamic of two now. And the second one, of course, will be influenced by what's already there. Like we can't stop that, no? And I can even try to follow my first line in a way a little bit. So we can also experiment with that. Um, the funny thing is, even if I try to exactly copy it, it's not going to happen. I would have to concentrate so hard to go exactly the same line again. And we also work with that. So sometimes we use lines in conjunction with other elements. And we always allow the line to be free in a way. We always allow the line to surprise us with its movement, creating a very dynamic, very just interesting. And so I'm just going to go and react to what is already there. So I'm kind of going a little bit the same pathway, but of course it's never exactly the same pathway. So you can imagine you're in the river. Maybe you can imagine there's like a bunch of boats in the river and they all go down the same river, but none of them will take exactly the same path. They're all gonna have their own individual path. So I'm gonna draw one more. One more river line. And each time, feel into, stay with this observation. And of course, there's going to be parts that feel better, parts that feel more tension. So when I mentioned going towards the tension, it doesn't mean that we have to stay in the tension all the time. It's okay to have like here, this one swing up here felt really good to me. And I recognize that too. And I'm like, okay, that feels really good. Um, and I don't, um, yeah, I, I can still go there. No, I'm, I'm not forbidding that or something, but just remaining aware of it allows us to actually also look into the spaces that are difficult. And this is what Neurographica is all about. We want to create change in our lives with the help of this art. And this is why the line is such a crucial element because we use it in every picture and we always go into this um, unexpected space with it. So even, you know, my river is very, has kind of a clear outline, but no matter how many lines 
I go over it, it's going to change a little bit. Just like another day for the river, it changes just a little bit again and shapes its surrounding just a little bit more every time. And I see a different dynamic inside the river again every time. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to open the microphone later to ask for questions. So I hope you have some questions. <laughs> um, but now I want to also introduce um, an element or better a step in the algorithm that is very, very closely connected to the line. So Neurographica is an algorithm and has elements. So we have on the one hand, visual elements, maybe I do a very quick, like, okay. So we have on the one hand, visual elements that this neurographical language is made out of. And the neurographic line is one of those elements. And it is one of the most important elements, definitely. But there are others. It's a, a visual language that has several elements and we can use them in different ways. And then we have the algorithm. Algorithm. Um, algorithm means several different steps. Neurographica now has eight steps, eight steps. So every drawing, we go through these eight steps. Always start starting with the theme, that's always step one. Um, and then I'm not gonna tell you all the steps because that is um, the content of the, of the basic course. So I'm not allowed to share that for free. Um, but I can, of course, give you an insight into what it looks like. Um, so we always start with a theme and then we create some kind of pattern or uh, composition. In our case now, this would be the composition. So I create a composition. And then we have a step that we call rounding. Rounding or also conjoining. I think this is like a translation from Russian, so I'm not sure how much sense it makes in English, but we're joining things together. Um, and this is, I think, the, well, it depends. This is a step in the algorithm that we keep coming back to. Um, I really love to come back to that in my drawings. So every time I add a new visual element, I go back to rounding. This is something that is very closely connected. Every time we add a line or another visual element, we go into rounding. So what does rounding look like now? Um, now I already have a few lines here. I'm gonna draw another line here. So sometimes we have lines crossing. I already spoke about that, that that is a sign that kind of our thoughts meet. <laughs> um, and when we have a cross that of like a, yeah, like a, a street cross, um, it has a little bit of, um, I'm gonna say uh, a rough energy. No, it's crossing, it's very um, strict. So what we want to do is smooth it out. Rounding is a process of smoothing, of softening, of connecting. So instead of having these two lines just run into each other um, and creating these little corners there, I go into the crossing and I'm going to show in a moment how I personally like to do that in the picture. And I go into the crossing and create a connection point instead. 
So what I like to do in drawings like this is to also look at the spaces between the lines, imagining that if, if every line is a thought, a train of thought, for example, and they meet each other, what happens between them? We have in German a saying that says we can read between the lines when we read a text, for example, or when someone speaks. I I'm not sure if that's the same in English, but it, it makes sense to me in English, reading between the lines. So here we look between the lines. Yeah, the actual lines. <laughs> when we read, we read kind of between, between the words, I guess. Um, so we want to create round shapes. So I'm just gonna go into my picture and look at an area that's interesting for me. Um, today, we're not gonna round all of this. Like my river has so many different overlapping points. I'm just gonna look at, okay, where, where is a point of interest for me? And I have like this kind of area that's interesting for me. Here it is, a shape that's interesting. I don't know, it brings like, um, ideas into my mind basically you know I see like this face here almost and I'm not going to draw the face but I'm going to go into this area and look at the shapes so here I just spoke about the shapes I'm going to follow this shape now just going over each line again and of course these are also I may change the line a little bit by doing that and I create a round shape. And then I go into the shape next to it and also create a round shape. So I'm personally not actually concentrating on these corners so much, but I concentrate much more on the spaces between, which gives it to me a different quality and it makes sure that I'm not just um, going into the corner here and then have something that sticks out just as a corner, but is not connected to the whole. So I would always go into the entire figure or at least like follow the line a little bit more. I hope that makes sense for people now. I know that a lot of people when rounding, they only concentrate on the corners. And I think personally that there is a lot to be gained by going into the entire shape again, following the lines again. And then maybe, you know, there's little changes because of course my um, pen is going to create little changes just because I'm going into it again. Let's just look at, okay, here up here, there's three of these interesting little round figures now. And like this, usually I would go through the entire picture. Right now, I would like to invite you to just like join me in five minutes of rounding to feel into it. And I would like to invite you to try out just going into the corner and just trying to round out the corner and the other one where you go into the figure and create a round figure inside the lines. And kind of just feel if that makes a difference for you in your sensation. So I hope that um, it makes sense to you right now that I'm talking so much about inner sensation because that is one of the things that is very fundamental for me in Neurographica. This is not just a drawing method. It's not a method where we create beautiful, relaxing pictures. We can, of course, and that is what I spoke about when I mentioned that we, of course, need to take care of ourselves no? and see how much tension we can actually take. Not every you know, graphic drawing has the, the same intensity. I have made drawings that have so much tension in them 
And after I finish that drawing, I have big revelations or, um, yeah, it's kind of like it has a bigger impact for me. But I can, of course, also use it to relax. Now we have an algorithm, for example, that is completely dedicated to harmonizing, which um, is Neuromandala, it's called. And there we work with very soothing elements. But we always also have the possibility to really get into what needs to be looked at right now and really make inner changes. So that is the goal of Neurographica, to create inner changes. This is another reason why we um, try to avoid patterns, easy patterns, know the patterns that our brain likes. Our brain loves when we do the same thing over and over again, because it's easy, it's predictable. But when we do something like this, where we never know what's gonna come out at the end, that is a different story for our brain. Maybe it's gonna to have to look at things differently. And that is what we want to trigger with this Neurographica method. Um, so I'm going to see if there's anything else that I wanted to share about this. Um, so I just rounded one section now, but even just rounding this one section now, it's like there's something interesting going on there for me. And I could continue with that and probably add color and add all the other elements at some point. But um, today I really just wanted to concentrate on that, speak to that. Um, and so another way that I like to explain the rounding is to integrate. So whenever I bring up uh, especially difficult things, difficult themes to work with, then I kind of need to integrate. I need time, I need to spend time to allow my system to adapt to this. Um, right now, I want to allow my system to adapt to this kind of very intense river. So the rounding process allows us that. It allows us to go into a kind of meditative state where our system can integrate and work with all the things that we brought up. So in a way, the line is an element that allows us to bring tension to the forefront, to allows us to feel, oh, there, I feel tension there. There's something there. There's maybe a theme that's, that um, I want to work on. And the rounding harmonizes. So we have this very interesting pair of on the one hand, the line that can bring out things and trigger and take us beyond our own boundaries, you know, like uh, open up our boundaries. We go into spaces that we wouldn't usually go to. And then the rounding helps us to integrate that, to bring it into harmony with ourselves again. So this is why these two really belong together. If I only draw the lines and I'm left with this like all oh, chaos looking thing here. And um, I might feel like uncomfortable about it. But once I do the rounding, which I guess I'm going to sit down now and round my entire river after, <laughs> um, then I can yeah, process it in a way I can process all the things that happen there. And Pava says, we don't even need to know the thoughts that are in here. No, I was speaking of trains of thought. So we don't eat, need to consciously become aware, but we open up to it. So maybe just by looking at this, just by rounding this area out, I can 
um, have an insight about myself, about my own life. And yeah, for me, it's kind of like this picture, this portrait here, this image. I'm sure, you know, maybe you see it, maybe you don't. That's like one of the things that's really important to know that we're not trying to create something that we can show to others and they see what we mean. We're trying to create something that speaks only to us. It's very personal. Neurographica is incredibly personal. So I'm going to come back for another moment here. Um, before I open our live group to questions, I would like to share um, a few ways that you can work with me and work with this method. First of all, on September 3rd, my basics course starts, the basic user course, which is the starting point for everyone who really wants to go into neurographic and really working with challenges, themes, uh, more than drawing for um, recreation, I'm going to say. So really going into this um, space of what we call self-coaching. I'm not a, a giant fan of coaching, um, but for me, it, it makes sense. And for me, it works. I'm going to say that. Um, we can go into the space of self-exploration with it. This is how I would call it. So if you're interested in that, um, I'm gonna send to an email to everyone who signed up at the end, or I'm gonna post something under this video whenever it's posted somewhere. Um, so that is basically the first step if you wanna work by yourself. I also do one-on-one -on -one sessions where I use the method with people uh, where we go very deep into their themes. Um, and it's of course a conversation as well, but a conversation that also uses the drawing. So in the session, um, the client also draws. And then, um, yeah, there's a, a lot of different other programs on my website that I'm not all going to mention right now, but um, you can find me and uh, we can work together or you can learn something from me. Uh, but yeah, this introduction is basically the first step of the basic user course. This is um, what we will learn there. We will learn, of course, all the eight steps of the algorithm. You will learn the theory behind it, which is really interesting and really like deep going. Um, because Pavel Piskorev, the founder, he's a psychology professor, so he created this method with the whole um, idea behind it um, of where, how every step is, like on, on what layers of your subconscious it can be working. So you're going to learn about that as well. Um, yeah. And now I'm gonna just stop this recording, say thank you. And I'm interested in any questions or comments that you have.